Hey there friends and welcome back to Strange Rebel Gaming. I'm Brianna White and today we'll be playing through the next part of The Last of Us Part 2. The last one was a real doozy. I don't really even know how to make heads or tails of it and I have no idea. I mean I have some idea of what we're in for but I really have no idea what we're in for. <laughs> If that makes any sense at all. Anybody who's played the game probably understands where I'm coming from. Take a second before we begin, if you'd like to like the video, as I give a huge shout out to our patron of the day, Jorge. Jorge, thank you so much for your amazing support, both on Patreon and on Twitch. It means the world to me every time I see your username in the chat. Thank you so, so much for contributing to the growth of SRG throughout this year. It's it's really, really been amazing, and I'm so grateful I can't even express. Thank you so, so much. And now, everyone, let's get on to that gameplay video. Enjoy. I for sure was not ready to play this moment after watching what I watched last stream. I wouldn't have had the emotional capacity to look at that. You know, it's interesting because I was kind of processing what happened last episode for a while after I finished playing. And what I realized was I don't even remember what Ellie was saying or doing, really, until I watched it back, because I was Ellie. I experienced that completely empathetically through her. And I thought that was so interesting and really spoke to how well done it was that they make sure that you as the game player play as her when you walk into that house so that you experience it through her. You become her in a way. And so I don't remember what Ellie was saying or doing until I watched it back because I just, I just, it was too brutal. I didn't want it to be, you know, I, I was just shaking my head like, no, I want this to not be happening. It was like, compulsive like I wanted to like shake it off and so I'm really interested now to see what happens and how how Ellie deals with it because that's also how I'm going to deal with it as the player which I think is a really really interesting place to begin from. Because like I said last time, I think this is the true beginning of the story. This is this is the beginning of Ellie's story. <sighs> and as you can see here, you know, this cemetery has many graves in it. But none of them seem to matter except the one. None of them are personal like Joel's. And so your brain almost blurs out the rest of them, not realizing that every single one of those graves had people mourning them, sad and angry and hopeless in the same way, every single one. And yet, when you're standing here looking at Joel's, none of those other ones matter. Isn't that interesting too? How it sort of narrows your focus? You know, it's an interesting note about sadness and grief and depression is that it does narrow your perspective. Like chemically in your brain, it makes it so that you can't have perspective. You can't see outside 
of your sadness. And fighting that is like step one to recovery. It's so important to remember that it will get better, that there is something outside of your sadness. But that's how you heal. But Ellie's not ready for that yet. I couldn't get to the horses. Looks like Tommy took one. Now Maria's got the stables locked down. <sighs> Fucking Tommy. We'll figure something else out on the way. A car or a horse or something. Okay. This makes getting to Seattle a lot harder. Then it's gonna be harder. You can still change your mind, you know? I know. Just don't want you to feel like you have to. Ellie. You go. I go. End of story. You need to get your backpack. I hit it by the east gates. I figured we'd want to slip out that way. So it sort of seems like, you know, in the last conversation when, when Tommy went to Ellie and said, I'll try to get a group together for us to head to Seattle and get your revenge. And then it seems like Tommy just bailed. That's what I think they're implying, that Tommy took a horse and Maria locked down the stable so no one else could take horses because Tommy just left. Which is sad. But when you're, when you're grieving, you do things that don't make sense sometimes. Look at all the flowers. What do you need? I, I can go get it. I want to do it. Okay. I'm okay. Come on. I'll hang out down here. Thanks. So this is the house that Joel had been living in, in Jackson. Dino, I guess. <laughs> that was a good day. If you were to visit Wyoming 115 to 108 million years ago, you might have the misfortune of running into a Dionychus. Standing at about 5 feet tall, 11 feet long, this Cretaceous period carnivore was long considered to be a vicious hunter. Fast moving with a sickle-like claw on both hind feet, it would likely pounce on its prey and tear into it while still alive. Much of this speculation is not inclined. Much of this is speculation. It's not entirely clear how this theropod hunted, or even if it was exceptionally fast. Paleontologists has uh, have as of yet not found a complete fossil specimen. When researchers are unsure about the missing pieces in the puzzle of what a dinosaur was, they fill in the gaps with similar dinosaurs that we do know more about from the same family tree. For example, Dionychus shares its family tree Dromaeosauridae with close relatives Velociraptor and Microraptor. 
The dromaeosauridae, or running lizards, are commonly called the raptors. They are fast-running feathered theropods found globally during the Cretaceous period. Feathers. For many years, dinosaurs were thought to be scaly, lizard-like, cold-blooded monsters, but fossilized theropods in the raptor family have been found with feather-like structures surrounding their bodies. So far, no remains of Dionychus with intact feather structures have been found. However, we can still extrapolate a very high likelihood that they had them, due to the presence of these feathers in Velociraptor and Microraptor remains. You can see how complicated paleontology can be. Scientists in this field rarely have a full skeleton to work from. It's usually bits and pieces that they try to that they used to try to tell a whole story and build a picture of who these ancient animals were, how they looked, and how they behaved. As our knowledge grows, our picture changes. I bet you've seen lots of images of dinosaurs looking like scaly lizards. What do you think of the new picture we have of a more bird-like animal covered in feathers? Learn more about our feathered friends in the stairwell feather exhibit. What's interesting is that they have now since this this was some of the latest research is that some dinosaurs had feathers but now they're going back on that saying maybe they only had a few decorative feathers maybe on their tails and weren't completely covered in feathers fun fact Ellie drew this. You should keep it, Ellie. He also kept beans and seeds. Aww. It's a picture of the group at a family meal. Oh boy. I don't know if I want to read this one. But I'm going to. My mouth tastes like iron. Wounds break open as I scream, scratch, sing. You were the soft twang of nylon, a smell of wood oil, fretful. Guitar strings with iron are brighter, scratch. Guitar strings with iron twang, scratch, sound brighter. They mistook your resonance and left me with dissonance, scratch, and left me with rust. All I have is our last conversation, looping like a chord progression, harmonies in blood. WLF, Washington Liberation Front, who are they? Tommy said her name was Abby. Down in the corner there, she has written Y. See, it's things like the these plates and the mug that are the worst because these things are signs of life of a house that's lived in, of a house that's in progress. C, 
seeing the little things that indicate that. That sucks. That hurts. Paint. You wouldn't think in a post-apocalyptic world about them repainting anything. You wouldn't think that that would be something they cared about. This is what Joel did in his free time. He got a new hobby. Work in progress. Wow, he was probably making them for... for the community. This is probably what he was doing to add value to the community. Because in a small, difficult community, everybody, everybody pulls their weight. In some way. Everybody contributes somehow, and maybe that was what Joel did, his woodworking. All the promises at sundown, I meant them like the rest. Not really sure what all this is. Man, clothes, clothes hold a lot of smell of a person. That can wreck someone. For those of you who maybe don't know, that's Joel's daughter, Sarah, that he lost 
on the very first night of the infection outbreak. And that's Joel and Ellie, his figurative daughter. Man, the sound design of that of that drip from the faucet. Oh, it makes you feel so empty inside. On the nightstand here is The Idiot's Guide to Space. Which Joel was reading because he knows how much Ellie loves space. What that means is Joel doesn't know anything about space, but he wanted to learn so that he could talk with her about it. This is the watch that Joel's daughter, Sarah, gave him for his birthday. Which I also believe was on the same night as the outbreak. Or at least it was very close to it. That he wore, even when it was broken, for the entirety of the first game. So this box is memories from the first game, basically. <sighs> Everything okay? this feeling that as soon as I get down there I'm going to be thrust into a new story adventure. Someone's going to be waiting for us down there. Suddenly everything's going to become very urgent. I don't know. I'm just not ready. Maria, I'm headed to Seattle. I wish I could let it go, but I can't. I have to bring these people to justice. Ellie's gonna try to come after me, but stop her. Take her guns, lock up the horses, maybe lock her up. Buy me some time so I can end this. Love you always, Tommy. So he did the opposite of bail. He's gonna bail. get himself killed. He should have taken me with him. You should have given us a group to go after those fuckers. I wish I could. You gotta try to lock me up? I'd prefer that you stay. That's not gonna fucking happen. I'd prefer that you stay, but I know you better. You going with her? Yeah. So you're just gonna sneak out of here? Hmm? Yeah. 
On foot? Yeah. I told the stable to let you out with your horse. Grab some ammo, too. Thank you, Maria. Just, uh, do me a favor and bring my dumbass husband home in one piece, please. Of course. Why do I get the feeling that is not gonna happen? All right. Get going, you're, you're losing light. Okay. This hunter was on top of him, drowning him, and Joel couldn't get to his gun. Jeez. Were you scared? Well, I, I didn't even think, I just, I just ran in there, grabbed his gun, and shot the guy in the face. How old were you? Fourteen. How old were you when you first killed someone? We talking infected? No. Fully conscious, non-fungal person. Ten? Wow. What happened? Guy was coming at my mom. I stabbed him. Shit. You got me beat. Yeah, I'm a real badass. So how lost are we? Uh, we're not. Uh-huh. Hey, have a little faith. What about those crazy cannibals you said you and Joel ran into? They came after you guys once. Maybe these WLFs are connected to them. No. It didn't seem like the same group. Maybe those black market smugglers back in Boston? Do you not? Joel crossed a lot of people. I don't see the point in guessing. Okay. At least until we find out more information. So interesting that they're basically going through all of the events from the first game. Probably knowing that most of the people playing this game have played the first game, but just as little, you know, reminders of you know, it's been a long time since the first game came out, 2013. So, just reminders for anybody who didn't replay it recently. Oh yeah, remember that group of cannibals? Remember David? Oh yeah, remember that group in Boston? Just, just little trailing reminders of the game that everyone loved. I'll be honest, though, I do feel lost. said I'm lost. Okay, this is a dead end. Why would it lead me down a dead end? I'm so confused. <laughs> How did I get lost? 
How did I manage that? Yes, this makes sense. And then... This makes sense. Right? Well, I'm just floundering at this point. If I get to my destination, great. If I don't, well... Also great. She always finds a way. I'm looking for the little patches of light. You're, okay, we're supposed to follow the light. Okay, okay, this is new. Okay. Okay, okay, we're good. We're good. I can gallop now. It's fine. It's fine. Nothing happened. What? Okay, this is new. Okay. Cars. Yeah, we're getting close. Start keeping an eye out. Got it. Here we go. Guess I was wrong. Turns out you do know where you're going. Wow, this is so eerie to see. Four years later. Ah, Seattle. This away. Off we go then. Shimmer. Yeah. Let's explore this little area, why don't we? Man, it's crazy. Everybody in the entire USA has the same calendar. Weird. Got ourselves another card. I guess we still care about collecting. The Starfire Kids. 60 points brain, 60 points brawn, affiliation, Society of Champions. Emiru and Sora Hoshi. When 14-year-old twins Emiru and Sora Hoshi found a meteorite in the woods outside Kyoto, touching it imbued them with imbued them both with the power of astrokinesis, the ability to take starlight and turn it into energy. Taken into custody by the Society of Champions, Tesseractor mentored the kids on how to use their power safely and wisely, though his overprotective nature eventually drove them away. Now they live on the streets, trying to find meaning and purpose in their powers. Heroes. Love it. Hmm. A map. How handy. A map of downtown Seattle. That's exactly where we're going. Wow, look at that. This is very helpful for someone who maybe gets lost a lot. Anything good in there? Found an old tourist map. Well, that's something. Man, 
nothing back here either. But thanks for checking, Shimmer. Oh boy. Just looking pretty destroyed here. Looks kind of cool, though, to see it reclaimed like that. Horses are kind of the best, aren't they? Sure seems quiet. Yeah. Think about how well we hide our lookouts. I know. That's what scares me. Man, I don't know how to feel right now. Nervous is a start, but I'm also still sad. But I'm also thinking maybe this is going on a little bit too long. This whole horsing through the forest thing. Whoa. Set the QZ. Yep. Watch the high spots. Watch the high spots? What does that mean? So QZ, I assume, means quarantine zone. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. I will take this. Thank you. Well, while I'm off the horse, I'll just kind of look around at everything else, too. Why do you think they gave me a weapon? Am I in for a fight? Oh no. Looks like there's some cracks up there in the wall up above. You see it? Yeah. Not sure how we get up there though. Climbing. I don't know. Thanks, Shimmer, for following us. What a good horse. Trespassers killed on sight. That's friendly. Interesting. In the right place. Well, what I find interesting, everyone. yeah, exactly. Put up this sign. Means there's gotta be a way in. If this is the WLF, if this area belongs to them, this is their zone, then where are the lookouts? Where are the people? Where are the people to say to shoot from above and be like this is our zone, you know? Hey, this looks like a UPS truck. Okay, what is this thing? This is a whole thing here. Okay, the Fedra stages of infection. That's pretty interesting. Stage one, cordyceps has taken over the victim's motor functions. Fast and agile. Stage one usually, stage one infected usually travel in packs. Do not let them swarm you. Infected stage two, uses environment to hide and ambush victims. Will frequently flank and attack from behind. Approach with caution and check your surroundings. Stage three, completely blind, but acute hearing Uses echolocation to seek out prey. Keep your distance. Stage 3 infected are known for their ferocious attacks and are extremely lethal. So stage 3 is the clickers. Stage 1 would be... Stage 1 and 2 would be types of runners, right? Stage 4. Rare but dangerous evolution of stage 3 infected. Incredibly strong and capable of throwing acidic projectiles. Do not engage unless absolutely necessary. So those are the bloaters. That's what we remember from the last game. Hmm. 
Nothing in this drawer. Patrol routes, rations inventory, cleared zones. That's interesting. So, Abby's name isn't here. And I also feel like if this was still being used, it's kind of stupid to like put it out where anybody could see it, you know? Your whole plan, your rations, the names of everybody. Can I crawl under this? Hey, I can. Wow. Wow. Look at me. What? What? What are you? What are you indeed? Take? What else is under here? Oh, my backpack's gonna get stuck! Claustrophobia! What did we take? Was it just a rag? Part of a rag? Oh! There's some more journal entry. Idaho Falls. Dina caught three jackrabbits tonight. She has these traps her sister taught her how to build. They're fucking effective. My appetite hasn't come back yet, trying to force food down. Twin Falls. Found a camp along the main highway. If it was Tommy's, he'd probably... He's probably only a day or so ahead of us. We're getting close to Boise. Dina's pushing to go around. I don't want to add two days to this trip. These hunters tried to ambush us. Fuckers didn't stand a chance against us. We were scavenging for supplies and I was looking at Dina. I felt a deep appreciation for her coming along. I really love her. They're in love. Baker City, we saw a pack of wild horses today. They were skittish, then Dina offered them some of the fruit we collected. They ended up following us for a bit. Wish I had a camera. I've never seen her smile so wide. For like half a day, I wasn't thinking about the WLF or Joel. Feeling guilty about that now. Oof. I'm struggling to sleep. Keep seeing him with his head. Dina seems to be sick. Think she caught a cold. I feel calmer with her lying next to me. I want to do something nice for her. Yakima. Found another camp along the highway. Can't be sure it was Tommy, but we haven't seen other people in two weeks, so fingers crossed. Okay. So these are cages, quarantine cages, I assume. Are these cages? They are Holding cages. Cells. Soldiers have them in Boston too. And it looks like I found the other side of that rag. Sweet. So now we have one full rag, but are still missing some alcohol. What do we have here? Take some supplies. Good. Good, good. Okay, so we've explored. We've done some of that. We didn't go in here yet. Let's go in here. When you get to the gate, look for a soldier named Kiernan. Kieran? Kieran. Tell him I sent you. Then give him the kilo and he'll get you inside the wall. Good luck. Smuggling! Kilo of what? That's the question. I 
Anything good in there? Pretty picked over. Nothing. What? Hint? I don't need a hint. I'm exploring. Game, stop it. Don't try to give me hints. How many of you are there? How many people have you killed? So it told us to look up that direction. But how we get up there is part of the goal. <laughs> Climbing <laughs> is not going to happen. So I'm wondering if, oh. These were soldiers from the QZ. See the Fedra uniforms? You think it was the WLF? Yeah, and they left them here, like a warning. That's fucked up. It is. It is pretty messed up. That's true. So I wonder, since these are looking like climbables. Well, they were looking like climbables. Ah, well, this one's climbable. What can we see from up here? Can't interact with you. Ah, but I see a yellow ladder. And you know what that means. Always follow the yellow ladder. Doesn't seem like there's anything interesting on the roof of that. But you know me, I don't like to miss anything. But it really doesn't seem like there's anything interesting on the roofs. So let's see if we can... I don't know if we can make this jump. I don't think that's happening. So maybe we were never supposed to get on this one. Maybe. I don't need your hint game. Let me figure it out myself. Aha, okay. There's nothing on those roofs. Good, good, good. This jump I can make. Ellie, uh, come on now. That was dramatic. Up here. You got something? A ladder. You know, I'll pull down the ladder so you can climb up after. Dina, help me up here. Okay. I'll keep an eye out. Just see if you can get the gate open from the other side. Sounds good. I feel like that's gonna draw attention. Just a thought. really suck if this whole structure fell right down. Balance? Ugh. I don't want to balance. It's not what this game is supposed to be about. Now, what's the plan here? Go under that? No way. Huh? 
There we go. Okay. Now. Maybe this. Don't fall! Ellie? I'm good! Just almost died. Slightly terrifying. How did Tommy do this? All right, we are at the top and we can drop down here. Very gently, Ellie. All right, good. Nailed it. Ooh, okay. All right, so there's a ladder leads up. There's stairs that go down. Well, a ladder that goes down. And what do we have here? Some more buildings to explore. Wait, our horse. Oh, she's gonna try to open the gate. Okay, all right. Can't leave the horse behind. Go up. So, please climb this ladder, Ellie. Thank you. What do we have here? Take and take. And take. Cool. This was sweet. This was a good one. What do we have here? Chess master, eh? 100 points brains, 40 points brawn, affiliation, none. Caleb Sophos. After a run-in with multi-dimensional hero Tesseractor, criminal mastermind Caleb Sophos suddenly could see every possible outcome of his decisions before he made one, naming himself Chess Master for his newfound ability to see dozens of moves ahead. This power came with a cost. Though he made a fortune helping other criminals plan their heists, seeing all possible outcomes crippled him with indecision. Unable to utilize his power to enrich himself, he is forced to rely on others to make choices for him. Villain all the way. Well, listen. What we call that in Brianna's noggin is analysis paralysis. You got too many choices, and sometimes the best choice is just to make a choice. It doesn't matter which one. Because sometimes not making a choice is the worst choice. Now, what do we have here? Zelda, this person's name is Zelda. Zelda, once your unit's taken the gate, open it up and coordinate with John's unit. We've got plants in the refugee line ready. I don't want any Fedra survivors. As soon as you've got control of the area, offer the refugees entry in exchange for loyalty to the WLF. May your survival be long. Okay, so WLF, took over this area, killed Fedra, and now is is basically growing their group by taking in any refugees. Okay. Down the ladder quickly. And now down this ladder quickly. Oh, I can press, oh, oh, that was really far. And now we're crouched? I mean, no? Okay. That's weird. Brick, my good friend Brick. I love some Brick. Okay, I'm guessing you're gonna be locked. Of course that doesn't work. Of course that doesn't work. Look at me, I get not being game. surprised. 
Oh, you're probably not going to have any power at all. Hmm. Look at me, not being surprised. Okay, how do I get you power? Well, you could try just staring at it. Hmm, that's not working. Weird. Everything's locked. Great. Just fabulous. Break? Wait, what happened to my... What? Where'd it go? Come back! What? There was a thing here! No! Where did it go? What just happened? There was a thing to take here. Oh, it slid. Okay, this is it. Okay, whoo. We got it. It's fine. It's fine. We got it. What do we have here? Oh no. Okay. Wonder when this was written. Oh, what are these gate codes? So annoying. Okay, got a big operation coming up and Isaac wants us to scavenge. I feel like Isaac is the leader in all of these letters. Saravena base. I'm still reading, That's Ellie. Something. Give me a second. Got a big operation coming up and Isaac wants us to scavenge any remaining supplies from downtown. Take any gas from the courthouse garage, the dome, and take them to the safe house in Saravena base. Okay. So does that mean there's gonna be gas in those places? Aha, patrol routes and inventory again. See, at least this feels a little bit more secure. Okay, we'll unlock you too. Nailed it. Uh huh. You look like a power generator. That's a generator. Ellie, I just said that. Mm, you don't look like something I can climb up on. Yeah, that's probably because you're not. Okay, then you. Oh, I gotta do this thing again. <laughs> Actually, that was not so bad. Okay. Great. Oh, shit. Okay. Open the gate! Ooh, another brick. Ellie? Ellie! Over here! Take. Oh, look, a little window. Hey, Dina. Hey, everything Peek okay? What was that sound? I got that gate open. Gotta figure out this one now. Well, we believe in you. Thanks. I feel like that generator is very loud and would probably be heard for a really long time or a really long ways away. Am I alone in that? Is there anything in the bed of this Jeep? No? Okay. Well, I'm glad I checked anyway.
nothing, something. Of course not. It could not be that easy. It could never. Okay, so then if it's not that easy, maybe this console needs a generator? Do you have your own generator? Ugh. Needs juice. Needs the other generator. You got it. What about you? Locked, of course. How do I get up there? How's it going? Dina, don't rush me, ma'am. Thanks. Hmm. Definitely cannot get up there. Yeah, jumping onto that is not working. <gasps> Definitely not. Okay, well, then we're just gonna assume that we're not supposed to do that yet. Okay. So then, in that case, we'll take you. And we'll walk you over here. And you don't reach. Hmm. There's no way to push. Okay, this is a puzzle. This is a puzzle that it's my job to solve. So, how do we solve this puzzle? Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe I could get some perspective by looking at it from this angle. Hey, Ellie! Don't you dare give me a hint, Dina. What? Hey, what's up? Don't hint me. That cord won't reach. It looks pretty long. Can you get it over? Hmm. Maybe. What? Over? I'm supposed to throw it? It didn't even tell me I could throw this. Was I just supposed to assume that? Well, I guess we have thrown a rope one time before in this game. So maybe I was just supposed to know that, but still. I was not going to guess that at all. Aha! A perfect fit! Mm -hmm. Whew. Okay. But I'm really more concerned with how I get into that gate area.
passcode. Let's see what the passcode was. 0512. A four character yes. pin. It's not very safe. Poor Shimmer. Let's get out of here. That crash was pretty loud. I realize it's locked, but I'd like to get in there, please. Because it offends me that I can't get in there. Okay, so if the tactic is not to climb, because I can't jump here. This whole breaking windows thing is is very new to me, as you can see. And it's interesting because as gamers, when you've played a lot of games, you develop blind spots based on what previous games limitations were. So in most games, you can't just break windows and go through them. And so you develop a sort of neural pathway and like that doesn't even become an option for you. And so a good game opens up one of those levels of creativity and gives you the opportunity to do something that you could never do before. Like in Breath of the Wild, you could climb a mountain like you never could before. So it's, it's pretty nifty, but it's taken me a second and a half to rearrange that previous blind spot. What do we have here? Take, 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 take. And now we have enough for a health kit. And we shall craft a health kit. We shall. Good job, us. Now we have one should we need it. Like, what's the safe distance for Ellie to jump off the ladder, I wonder? Okay, great. So now we can ride on through. Now what? I found a note back there. Don't get clotheslined. Got some codes on it. it. Says there's a WLF safe house at some place called Saravina Base. Saravina. So we find it. Hopefully, we find our first WLF. Get them to talk. Go from there. Let's do it. Aha! Uh -huh. no. That looks familiar. Saravina Hotel. Well, that's gotta be it. <laughs> okay. Let's find a way past this, uh, fuck Fedra gate. Very creative. Gets right to the point. Let's get closer and scope it out. Oh, I wonder if I'm gonna need to turn this on. What now? come back to it. It's fine. We got plenty of time. Bench. Man, I miss when benches would just 
heal you right up. Oh. What do we have here? Fedra QZ census numbers. Okay, there are numbers for how many are admitted, how many are denied, how many are expelled. Sergeant Ward, continued WLF disruption of our supply lines in addition to infected attacks and spore infestations means we are still unable to meet the weekly food distribution quotas. Keep the city gates sealed to new entrants until further notice. To ease the burden on the food stock, step up your sweeps for criminals and expel them. All class two crimes now qualify for expulsion. We're running out of time, Lieutenant Torres. Idiots, just turning everyone against you. Valid, valid point. And right there is where we actually have to end today's video. I know, what's gonna happen next? The world may never know. I'm just kidding, you're gonna find out next episode as soon as I post it. Thank you to Team SRG, including editor and YouTube manager for helping me get content out faster for everybody. I hope that the past few months have proven that I'm really dedicated to making sure that I can provide amazing, consistent, high quality content for all of you. It's really important to me because you all have given me the ability to work my dream job and I could not thank you more for that. I really am so grateful from the bottom of my heart to all of you. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of today's video. Please remember to like the video. If you enjoyed it, share it with all your friends so they can enjoy it too. And of course, please remember to subscribe to Strange Rebel Gaming so you don't miss the next video. That's all. I love you all. Bye!